Good morning. Today we will talk about the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle refers to events that happen in one heartbeat. So events in one heartbeat. Okay. And there are about five events that happen. And we're gonna go through those and have you be aware of you know what the, the atria and ventricles are doing and how blood is flowing. So first just some background, you know the heart here if you draw the heart this way the heart has four chambers a right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle and these uh, ventricles, the lower chambers, they push blood out. They, they, they are your chambers of ejection. So the right ventricle will push its blood out into the pulmonary trunk, whereas the left ventricle will eject its blood into the aorta. That. Of course, you have four valves in the heart. There's a valve here called valve one, a valve here called valve two, a valve here, valve three, and one here, valve four. Okay, so the valves are the valves in the heart one and two are called your atrioventricular valve and three and four are referred to as your semi-lunar valves. And those valves control, control the flow of blood between the ventricle and the major arteries as well as between the atria and ventricles, okay? So keep that in mind, those, those will, will play a role going forward. Some other things that we want to discuss the term systole. So when we, we use the word systole, we're actually referring to when the lower chambers contract. Okay, that's systole. And diastole is when they relax. And we're always talking about the ventricle, not the atrium. Okay, diastole here. So when the heart beats, the upper chambers, the atria, contract first and they, they contract together, both sides, followed by the both lower sides. So atria, ventricle, okay, that's, that's how the heart beats. It's not four different chambers um, doing their own thing. It's uppers, then lowers, okay? Some other things we wanna hit before we get, get going here. Okay, that should, should, should get us there. So now we're gonna look at the events. There are five events that happen in a cardiac cycle. I'm gonna use the heart picture, just, 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 just use half of the heart, okay? So in step one, call this atrial contraction. So we begin the cycle with atrial contraction. At this point, so if I draw one, one side of the heart, this is do here, maybe just do the right side of the heart this way. Okay. So here is your right atrium, right ventricle, and this is your pulmonary trunk. This is your semi, your semilunar valve, and this is the AV valve here. Okay, so doing it, doing it, it contraction happens during late systole, sorry, late diastole, meaning the ventricles are about to start relaxing, so late diastole. And here, the AV valves are open on both sides. I'm just doing one side here. AV, AV valve open and your semi-lunar valves are closed. And in this case, when the atria contracts, it pushes the last remaining bits of blood from the atria in into the ventricle. So this is what happens, okay? So here, atria pushes the last maybe 20% of blood. into the ventricles through the AV valve. 
That's atrial contraction. All right? That happens in late diastole. So as soon as the atria is done contracting, then the ventricles start contracting. So now we're going to go into the ventricular systole. So, to, so here, after it, its contraction, you do what's called isovolumetric relaxation. Okay. And during this stage, so, sorry, I think let me keep this right these things. Isovolumetric contraction, not relaxation. And here again is draw half a heart. So here, the AV valves are closed in this case, and so are your semilunar valves. So during the stage, what we're called mid to late systole. So these are, these are, these are squeezing. Okay. Systole. Okay, this is, this is maybe early systole, not mid, not mid to late. Okay, early systole. Sorry for all these mistakes here. Early systole. It starts there, and now the ventricles contract. The pressure in the ventricles will, squeak, will close the AV valves. So AV valves and your semi-lunar valves are closed. And if both valves are closed, blood cannot leave. So, so no blood flow into or out of ventricles. Now keep in mind the atria, atria, atria on both sides are always getting blood back. You know, from your superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus, and on, on, the, on the other side, from your pulmonary veins. So, so you, the atria never closed up. It's the lower chambers that can be open and closed. Okay, so during isovolumetric contraction, I mean early systole, that's closed, that's closed, so blood cannot enter or leave the ventricle. Let's keep going. So now we're gonna to go to start for a small board. Stage three here is called the ejection phase. So at some point, as the heart, as the ventricles squeeze, the, the force gets strong enough to push open your semilunar valve. And so here, what happens during this phase is the valves get pushed open like so. The flaps get pushed open that way, this is closed, and now blood leaves the ventricles to enter either the pulmonary trunk or the aortic. So here, this is during, say, mid to late systole. Okay, pressure's high enough to open up the semi sem 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 valve. And so your AV valves are closed still, and your semi-lunar valves open. And here, blood flows into the aorta from one side or the pulmonary trunk from the other side. That's what's, that's what's called ejection. It's leaving the heart. It's pushed out around either to your lungs or around the body, okay? Then you do stage four. So in stage four, after you've ejected the blood from the heart, then the heart goes back into relaxation. So now this part is called isovolumetric relaxation. And ISO always means, ISO is the same, it means the same volume, which means that there's no blood leaving or coming in. ISO volume, okay? So here, again, here's the heart. So as the heart relaxes, diastole, the pressure here that, that, that was used to open up the, the semilunar valve is, is lessened, and so now the valves, the, the cusp of the valve fall back down to close it. Okay, so here, your lower pressure causes the valve to so shut back down, so then blood, some blood can, can, can go backwards, that's what, what the valve is for, to trap blood from going back, backwards into the heart. So this is during early diastole, and here, 
your ABs are still closed. The pressure, is, even the pressure is low enough for this, for this to close, it's still, it's still too high for this to open. So AB and semi lunar valves closed. And again, no blood flow into or out of the ventricle. Again, you still you always have blood flow coming in here. Okay. And then after it says relaxed, relax here. Where, where, where am I going here? Relaxation. Then step five. You density the pressure in the valve in the ventricle drops far enough to, to allow for this valve to open. So that's that's called your rapid filling. So doing rapid filling. These are still closed, but now the pressure of lower chambers are is low enough that the AV valves fall open, and then blood enters from the atria. Okay, doing again doing diastole. So doing mid to late diastole. It's late diastole, blood, your AV is open, and your semi lunar valves are closed, and then blood flows from atria into ventricle. That's called rapid filling. And this is happening during diastole. Then, right at the, at the end of diastole, that's when you start again. So, right at the end of diastole, that's when the atria contract push down the remaining blood that's in here into it, and then you go again. So, so, so after here, we, we, we go back to step one, where the atrial H, H squeeze, push blood down, and, and you cycle again. All right, so that's the cardiac cycle in summary, right? So again, you, first step is atrial H, H, H squeeze, push blood down, then the, the ventricles squeeze, the systole, to push blood out, then you relax, that's diastole, to get blood back in, and then then the atrium will squeeze again and start 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 it all over again. Okay. Now some things to fill in on here. Some terms that may be helpful. That's some terms to use. Okay. There's something. The term called the end diastolic volume. That's the amount of blood in in, in each ventricle volume in one ventricle at end of diastole, which means that when after, after the heart is relaxed and, and, and it gets full with blood, right before it starts to squeeze, if you, if you measure the amount of blood that's there, that's called the end diastolic volume, the amount of blood that's there to be pushed out. Then you have your stroke volume, that is the volume ejected by one ventricle. Now, by the way, both ventricles will push out the same amount of blood. You can't have blood back, you know, blood being pulled in the heart. So both sides, same, same volume out. So volume ejected by one ventricle is called stroke volume. So this is what has, so, so during systole, it, it does that. If you, if you measure what, what, just, what just left, that's called a stroke volume. Then you have your end systolic volume is the blood that remains after systole. So volume in one ventricle after systole. So the heart really, really never, never gets empty. It squeezes and suddenly, but what's left behind is called ESV in one ventricle. And in fact, in a, a, as a math formula, you can do ESV is equal to ESV is equal to what you began with, end diastolic volume, subtract what just left. That's the ESV. There's also another term that we use called your ejection fraction, which is the amount that left divided by how much was there, was there to begin with. Okay. This is called your ejection fraction. And normally it's around, around 6%, 6 is what typically gets pushed out on a regular, you know, resting heart rhythm. Okay, one more thing before we pause this section. It's a long, it's a long segment this time around, so I apologize for that part. 
So we have heartbeat. So you know your heart, when your heart beats, it makes two sounds. Okay, so the heartbeat. You have the first sound called the lup sound. The lup sound is caused by closure, closing of the AV valves. And this happens during ISO volumetric contraction. So right as the, the heart is going to and start to squeeze right away, the AV valves close. So, so, you, so you hear that sound, lup sound, okay? The dub sound, the second sound, happens when the semi-lunar valves close, okay? And this happens during isovolumetric uh, relaxation. So right after you eject the blood, then as the pressure drops in the ventricle, those semi lunar valves will fall back down. And that, that's the, the second sound you hear, okay? The dub sound, which happens, which happens during early diastole. This one happens during early systole, okay? And, and, and this entire thing, this entire cycle that happens, your entire cardiac cycle No, let's say that at rest, your heart rate is at about 75 beats per minute. That's your resting heart rate. So if, if you do the math, that means that each cycle can last for about 0 0.8 seconds. That's how long a cycle lasts for. I mean, that's how long, how long it takes to go through atrial contraction, isovolumetric contraction, ejection, isovolume relaxation, and your refilling. Okay, all that happens in 0.8 seconds. And during this time, Usually 0 0.5 seconds are spent in diastole and 0 0.3 seconds is spent in systole. You always spend more time relaxing than contracting in a cycle. Okay, that's a mouthful. Hopefully you get it. Okay, so now we'll pause here.